Everyday Expertise, and I'm Angela, and I'm here today with Robin Stroll. She owns and operates the Source Tea, a maker and seller of artisanal tea blends. Hi. Hello. Hello. And she has prepared this tea for us today. What is it called? Uh, this is Angel Falls Mist. Mm. It's a tisane. It's kind of a strawberry lemon thing. Mm, cool. So I'm going to try this. Cheers. Mmm, mm, that is good. Thank you. Mm. Is this uh, still available on your site? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so how did you get started with making tea? Okay, so, um, okay. When I was on my maternity leave, mm -hmm. I really did not want to go back to my day job. Was not enjoying myself there very much. Mm -hmm. And my husband said to me, well, you've always dreamed of having a tea house. And I said, well, yeah, you know, as a retirement plan. <laughs> and he's like, well, what are you waiting for? So that's pretty much how it began. Mm -hmm. um, it started with getting a lot of teas that were pre-made in the industry that's called white labeling, when you get someone else's product and then you put your name on it. Mm -hmm. And gradually I began to add more and more house blends, blends that I made myself. Mm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, so when did you sort of, you start, decided to start making your own blends? Um, Pretty early in, honestly, I it's like, well, I wanted a tea with this, this, and this in it. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out if anyone else makes it, so I'm just going to make it. Mm. And, How uh, did you learn to do that? <laughs> it's like cooking. You just <laughs> yeah, yeah. throw one thing at another thing, experiment. Does this taste good? Does it need more of this or that? Mm. So it, there was really no lessons involved. There was no, I didn't go to tea sommelier school, <laughs> which is a thing. Oh, yeah. Um, but I just was just experimenting with different mm. flavors, herbs, flowers, fruits, and mm started playing with those flavors. Uh, how many different types of tea do you make? Um, on my website, there's uh, more than 300 kinds of tea. Mm -hmm. Of those, there's about 50 house blends right now. Mm. And I'm adding more all the time. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I noticed, I noticed on your site, your blends, they sort of have these sort of whimsical, geeky names. Well, I'm a big geek. Like, <laughs> I, I've never hidden that. I've, I've been into all kinds mm. of geeky, nerdy things since I was very, very young. Mm. And uh, my original house blends, I tried to be, you know, just sort of normal about it. But then I came to the realization that there were not very many geeky teas out there. And I was like, well, why not combine two things I love into one? So I started really catering to fandoms and making mm -hmm. fan blends. And it's like, okay, if uh, Tony Stark was drinking a tea, what would that be like? <laughs> or what kind of tea would fit in with Hufflepuff? Mm -hmm. And I started really playing with those and coming up with those flavors and blends. And then, of course, stupid names to go with them. <laughs> and then you... you, you uh... You actually sell at conventions and stuff. Yeah, I sell yeah. online at, at conventions. Mm -hmm. I really love doing the conventions because it's another thing I enjoy doing. So I get to be a part of the convention, but also still making money. So that mm -hmm. helps. That does help. <laughs> <laughs> do you get a, what kind of response do you get from people at conventions? Huge, huge, huge. Whenever anyone sees something that like, oh, I didn't think I'd see a, a tea at a convention. That's great. I love tea. Mm. And then they realize what kind of tea it is and they see something they love there. Mm. Uh, for example, I recently at Com Montreal Comic Con where I met you, I introduced my line of Steven Universe teas, which I call my Crystal Harmonies blend. And people are reading the names and they're realizing they're the names of songs from the show and they lose their minds. And <laughs> it's like, oh my God. And they start singing bits of it to me. I'm like, yep, that's where I got that from. <laughs> does it really taste like Cookie Cat? I'm like, yes, yes, it does. Maybe it does, so, yeah. <laughs> No cats were made into tea. Nope. But <laughs> um, I really do try to encapsulate what did that song make me think of or what did mm -hmm. that moment in the show bring up for me. So. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it, for people who are fans to feel more catered to in that way is also a really nice feeling. Yeah, of course. And yeah. I'm sure it it sets you apart, basically. Kind of, yeah. yeah. It gives me a bit of a niche <laughs> other than people who like tea. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so this show is very much about process. Okay. Can you walk me through the process of creating a blend from sort of idea to finished product? Absolutely. Okay. Prime example. Um, 
just yesterday, a friend asked me, hey, do you have anything for good omens coming up? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, give me until the end of the weekend so I could fi figure that out. Because, of course, there's a market for that. And it was a fantastic show based off of a book that I've loved for years and years. And they drink tea in the show. They do. And it's <laughs> perfect. So the first thing I thought of was Agnes Nutty. Mm -hmm. Because it's Agnes Nutter's... Yeah. Very accurate, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I was like, okay, Agnes Nutty, right there is a pun. So that's mm -hmm. already done for me. Let's, okay, it's got to be nutty and fruity and very like a whimsical blend. Mm -hmm. And usually if I'm creating a new tea line, I like to think something that's a black tea, something that's a green tea, something that's a tisane and one other flavor. Right. So this is going to be my tisane. It's going to mm -hmm. be a fruit and nut blend mm -hmm. kind of thing. So that was an easy one. And then yeah. you, okay, I'm going to throw almonds in it and a bit of this and that and like, okay, I want some rose hip and I want mm -hmm. some uh, apple. And you sort of play with the fruits to come up with a balance. That was probably the easiest one I've had to make in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but then I started thinking, okay, am I going to call the green one crawly? Or am I like, I, you know, he's named a few different things mm -hmm. on the show. And in the end, I settled on foul fiend. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, what really captures his spirit? And I mm -hmm. came up with a very playful green tea with raspberry and lemon verbena in it. So mm. it's going to be this very lively, fresh flavor, mm -hmm. but still a green tea because he is, yeah, he is what he is. He's the servant. And then, you know, for Aziraphale, I was thinking something like very creamy, very sweet, mm -hmm. maybe a little overly sweet over yeah. the top because he is. Yeah. And then the fourth one I came up for in that grouping uh, that I decided on today is for the Bentley. Oh yeah, because <laughs> uh, he's underplayed in the show, but in the books was more of a big deal. Is mm -hmm. the car is almost its own character? Yeah. So I kind of wanted it to be rock and roll, but classic at the same time. So I kind of decided to go with a chai, mm -hmm. and I added a bunch of stuff to it. So it's really like you figure out your base, like what mm -hmm. is the base blend that you're going to work with that, right? And then you add things to it until it fits the concept you're going with. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of tasting and back and forth and torturing your husband and child sometimes and friends if they're around to see, like, what do you think of this one? Well, it tastes just like the last one. I'm like, no, but does it taste more apple to you? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Do, you, uh, do you come up with the name first or the concept first? Um, usually I will have a concept first, mm -hmm. the names, not always. No. Sometimes I really agonize over that, mm -hmm. especially because I don't want to tread on copyright too much. I always mm -hmm. change the names. So Aziraphale's blend is called Angel. It's yeah. cause that's what Crawley calls him. Foul Fiend is what he calls Crawley. Yeah. So those were easy and they're not copyrightable. So I'm good there. That's true. Bentley is the name of a car. I'm okay there too. Yeah. But, you know, you don't want to, like, I'm not going to call my Hufflepuff blend mm -hmm. Hufflepuff. Because mm -hmm. J.K. Rowling might be like, no, no, we don't do that. So it's Pufflehuff. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's tongue-in-cheek enough that it's cute. And yeah. I'm not going to get in trouble there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't call my my tea for the my Avengers line uh, the Incredible Hulk. It's you wouldn't like me when I'm green tea. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Everyone knows exactly what I'm referring to, and it's safe. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right. Other than fandoms, mm -hmm. what would, do you have any uh, influences in your tea making? Um, other than fandoms? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Are there question. any tea makers that you follow? Or oh, like um, I follow a few, but I always yeah. follow them more with a view of not copying not, what, they're yeah, not doing. Doing what they're doing yeah. uh, and making sure I'm not stepping on toes because you end up making friends within the industry. Yeah. Uh, first example that comes to mind is my friend Friday of Friday afternoon tea mm -hmm. in Seattle. She also does geeky tea mm -hmm. and I love her to death. Hi. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to copy what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And we really, sometimes we even talk about it through messenger, like just making sure we're cool with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, similarly at Comic-Con for the first time I had competition, um, Sense and Sensibility from Out East was there. Oh, yeah. And I kind of snuck by their mm -hmm. stall and I'm looking at it and like their fandoms are different from my fandoms. Mm -hmm. So 
we're good. But what they do is they have historical tea recipes that they're using, which I oh, thought yeah. was super cool. That is, and I'd cool. never seen that before. Yeah. So I was like, hey, neat. They get very Jane Austen. Uh, they they do that, but yeah. they also had like literally like this is a tea recipe from the 1700s. I was like, what? That's great. Where did you find that? How can I do that, but not do what you're doing? Yeah. So it, it's really neat to see these things, and yeah. I find it inspiring, but really cool that there's so many different ways we yeah. can find these ideas. That's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, so I'm following other tea makers so that I don't do what they're doing. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Right? And also to make sure they're not doing what I'm doing. That too, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, what's something you wish you'd known about tea before you started? Hmm. before you began this journey um to trust my instincts mm -hmm. sooner hmm. I waited a long time before starting doing my geeky tea blends yeah I did like my own house blends but I kept them like really sedate really like normal ish mm -hmm. before really diving into the fandom stuff for maybe four or five years mm -hmm. and I really feel like I wish I had trusted my myself and gone just gone for it from the start because mm. I'm having so much more fun with it now than I was even at the beginning. Yeah, because bef at the beginning you were you were unsure of your abilities or what? Well, a, a bit of that because yeah. it was still kind of new. I mean, I knew I liked tea and I I trusted my sense of taste, but mm -hmm. you know, can I blend a good tea? Do I know what I'm doing? Is there a market for geeky tea? I didn't really know. Yeah. So I was kind of afraid to take it in a different direction. Mm. That's cool. All right. So yeah, you're definitely you're doing tea. Full time. Yeah. Right. How do you integrate your tea work into your daily life? It's a job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you make sure that your kid gets ready for school, that everything's set up for their day, and then you get to your day. Mm -hmm. And you really do have to set a work day mm -hmm. because otherwise you could sit and like binge Netflix all day and get mm -hmm. nothing done. So, you do still have to set yourself a tone and a pace. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's like any other full-time job I do have an office that I work in from home mm -hmm. that's where I do work yeah and I also have like you know I don't just sit in my pjs I get dressed because that helps me remember I'm not just loafing around mm -hmm. and I try to keep to a certain schedule of this is when I have to go to the post office I need to order from certain suppliers by certain times of day to make sure they arrive at certain times so it's like you do kind of have to get into a rhythm and a schedule mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah Okay, um, favorite aspect of making tea? Uh, getting to be creative, getting to interact with people. I really love Twitter. I really love Insta, and I like talking to people on it. It's mm -hmm. one thing to post, but when people actually talk to you or ask you questions and you get to talk about the process, mm -hmm. it becomes a lot more fun. Oh, yeah. So I put it out there, for example, on Facebook today, like, hey, I'm trying to come up with uh, ideas for a Black Panther tea because I'm kind of stumped on there. I know I want it to have a purple flower and that's as much as I've got going. And so, you know, I put it up to my Facebook fans like, hey, what ideas do you have for this? What do you want it to taste like? And I do take that feedback seriously mm. because if they literally are telling me what they want, then I know where to go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite aspect, something that frustrates you? Um, when people tell you they want something, you get it in specifically for them and then no one orders it. Ooh. really annoying yeah it's happened before and it's like okay it comes down to like okay when people talk I listen and I get it mm. in and then you wait mm. and I thought you guys wanted this or you were so into it or mm. why aren't you ordering it now why am I bothering to keep it in stock it's still a consumable so it can't sit forever yeah. so there's that too yeah do you get because you have basically you have a an online shop. Yeah. Do you get people like ordering something and then returning it because no. they go I've this never, isn't what I thought it was or something like that? Has never happened to me. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, no one's ever returned to mm -hmm. to me saying it's it's not what I wanted or it's yeah. not what I expected. Um in part it's because I really do make mm -hmm. a point of uh, this is what it tastes like mm -hmm. to give them a little vignette of like flavor profile. Mm -hmm. These are the ingredients very specifically because people have allergies. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's right there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's not much mystery. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, 
if something's just not working out or you've got stress, you've got obstacles, how do you cope with it? Uh, well, that's okay. If something's not working out in terms of like a T specifically or just mm-hmm. business wise, I think in general, really, like if you have it, basically, how do you cope with stress or obstacles in um, the pursuit of your I, work? I have learned mm-hmm. and it's been hard that asking for help is okay. Yeah. So I'll call in a friend, you know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll ask my husband for a hand or I'll ask mm-hmm. a friend for a hand if I need it. I like, I'm, I'm hitting a brick wall here. Hey, Facebook friends, what do you think of this? Mm-hmm. Or I'll talk to other people I know who like tea, who are in fact tea sommeliers and I'll get mm-hmm. some feedback there and that will help with some of it. Mm-hmm. If I'm overwhelmed, there's too many orders. Hey, does anyone want to come over and help me pack up some orders today? Mm-hmm. That helps. Uh, mm-hmm. But generally I've gotten much better about it. At the beginning, mm-hmm. I got overwhelmed a lot more often. Yeah. Now it's not so bad. I'm much more used to it. I have a, a better system, I guess, for getting mm-hmm. things done so that I'm not overwhelmed and less afraid to ask for, for help when I need it. And it's important, I guess, to have a good support system. Absolutely. Well, yeah. any any small business, any entrepreneur is mm-hmm. really, it's priceless to have a, a, a good support system. Mm-hmm. People who are willing to lend a hand when you need it, especially understanding you're a small business. You can't pay them 25 bucks an hour, Yeah. but maybe they'll get some free tea or they'll get some mm-hmm. free product or something cool or other exchange out of it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Do you ever get, um, I guess you, maybe you call it block, uh, when you just have no ideas for new blends. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Definitely have that. Some, mm-hmm. it, it sometimes can go for months before I come up with something new. What do you the good do thing is I still case? have all of the other That's trees true. out you there. The other ones, yeah. it, it's not like, you know, people are waiting on my next novel. No. Um, and sometimes people will be like, I want to, you know, tea for this obscure book or fandom <laughs> or whatever. I'll be like, that's great. I've never watched that show, read that book, read that manga. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me about it? <laughs> what does it say to you? What would that, like, and yeah. I really, if someone's asked me for exactly. something that I'm completely stumped by, mm-hmm. I will tend to ask them for their input. That and sometimes sense. that involves, like, if they're local, I'll mm-hmm. invite them over for tea and we'll play mm-hmm. with flavors together. Mm-hmm. And if they're not, I might make them, like, sample one, two, and three and just have notes of what was in those and say, like, do any of these make sense for that thing? And mm-hmm. it's only happened a few times where it's someone else's fandom that I just, like, what? Yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes you're just, you know, there's life happening and you've got to be more involved in your kid's life or involved in administrating your own business. And there's just not as much time to be creative with stuff. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it waits before you add more things. Yeah. Um, Do you ever feel pressured to always be producing new no new stuff for the for the the shop and stuff it's my challenge to me when I do it but Mm -hmm. I'm not on a deadline for anything that's good yeah yeah it's nice to be your own boss for that Mm -hmm. so so um I think we've talked about a lot of things but Mm. do you have any advice for people starting out in uh, in your field um be aware that there's a lot of competition out there Mm -hmm. and find something that will help you stand out Mm -hmm. um for me, creativity, eco-responsibility, and um, ethical responsibility are top, top, top. If you're going to go into tea, you have to be aware of those things. Mm. Um, the ethics of the workforce of people who pick tea is huge. And like, if you start reading about it, it's a rabbit hole you can go for hours. Mm. So make sure whoever your sources are that they're very ethical in their practices. Um, I believe very strongly in eco-sustainability. I actually recently changed all my packaging so that it's more than compostable. It's omnidegradable so that even if Hmm. people forget to compost, it will still biodegrade in the trash. Oh, wow. So like it's really, you know, I'm foregoing the fancy packaging so that I can do that because Mm -hmm. that's more important to me than colorful labels. Yeah. So things like that, like really think about what do you want to say about you and your brand in that standpoint, and then what will make you stand out beyond that. Mm. So whether it's geeky teas or all of your teas are going to be color changing teas, which is a thing, or they're going to be glitter teas, which is a thing or Mm. whatever you want, pure source teas only. I hope you have a budget, Mm -hmm. but it's, uh, there's so many ways to make yourself stand out and you really need to keep that in mind all the time Mm. because your brand depends on it. 
thesaurus tea, I mean, it lives up to its name. That's a lot of tea to keep in stock. Yeah. Uh, but that's what works for me. Mm-hmm. So. Do you find it, um, did you find it difficult to find suppliers for the ingredients and stuff? In the um, I was lucky because I had prior experience having worked for a business that ordered teas in before. So I knew of some suppliers I liked to begin with already. Mm -hmm. And then through going to different trade shows, met others. Mm. And do you find people that are like-minded to you that have the same uh, principles as you and Mm. you kind of feel like you can work with that? Yeah. Have more than one supplier. That's also very important. (laughs) Yeah, I imagine. eh? Yeah. (laughs) All right. Um, yeah, I think we're basically, we're at the point where I'm going to ask you, how can people find out more about you and your company? Well, um, the easiest way is my website itself, the mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You can also check me out on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash the mm-hmm. on Twitter. I'm the and on Instagram, I'm real underscore the Because uh-huh. for some reason, someone had taken the source tea, <laughs> but Uh, I'm very responsive. If you message me on any of those platforms, I'll be very, very happy to talk to you. And uh, you could check out the little community of people who do chat there. And uh, I welcome it. Cool. Cool. We'll have uh, links to all these these places in the description of the video. Thank you. And I I think we are, we're basically, we're done. Um, This tea is really good. Thank you. What was it called? Angel Falls Mist. Angel Falls Mist. So I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, it is it is quite good. Thank and, you. And uh, thank you, Robin. Really a pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been Everyday Expertise. I'm Angela. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this interview. Be sure to share this video with friends and colleagues who may also enjoy this topic. Let us know your thoughts by leaving a comment below or check the description for our social media. See you next time.